We're here at Snapdragon Summit 2025 talking Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 next on Tech Stack. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, to uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon Summit uh, here in scenic Maui, Hawaii. Snapdragon Summit 2025 with Cindy Lay of Qualcomm, here to talk all things Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, the new mobile SoC from Qualcomm, uh, set to power a new fleet of flagship Android phones. Uh, Cindy, welcome to the tech stack. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Glad to be here. Yeah. Why don't we start with you? and your purview, um, you know, what you do at Qualcomm, so folks that aren't familiar with you, learn a little bit about you. All right, so I'm the uh, product uh, chipset uh, product management mm -hmm. uh, for Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 uh, on that. So pretty much everything that's on that platform is under my umbrella mm -hmm. on it. So we work with all the technology team, whether it's CPU, GPU, MPU, camera across the board to bring the latest, greatest technologies uh, uh, to the platform. Um, also, we work a lot with the engineering teams as well. We've got a global engineering team that I work with to make sure all this comes together and we bring the best product uh, to the industry. Nice. Just a little bit of responsibility there, huh? Just a little bit. <laughs> and Cindy, I assume part of that is software teams as well that go on top of that because everything's so software heavy these days. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We start with the hardware. Once we build the, the hardware, the software comes in and basically fine tunes and pull everything together. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's actually perhaps a good question to, to start with. Um, and, and maybe I think folks might not understand, you know, what it takes to pull together um, a mobile platform uh, for uh, flagship handsets. Um, do you start with, um, you know, a hardware vision, a hardware architecture, or is it more about keeping the user in mind and the use cases and the applications? Um, yeah, uh, that's a difficult question. It is a difficult. It is. Uh, it's actually <laughs> quite complex. If you if you look, it's it's really amazing uh, how much we can pack into the little tiny phone. Mm -hmm. um, but to us, we don't design for benchmark. We don't design for a score. Um, what we do design for is we try to design for our goal is um, the experience that the end consumer is going to see. So when we start defining the product. We look across. A, number one, there's a short term and kind of long term. Of uh, The first short term is what are the problems that end consumer today face? We like to make sure we solve those first, right? Because you have your phone, you're thinking, gosh, at least this could do something more. Um, so we want to make sure we improve the existing experience for all consumers and users um, on that. And then we look into the future of what's coming um, based off of the trends, based off of what we know um, on that. And that's kind of how we pull everything together on what we should build. Once we have that vision, we build it and we execute it and then we bring it to everyone. Wow. So, yeah, so from camera to agentic AI, you've got a lot on your plate. Francis, I know you've got some questions relative yeah. to uh, AI and a few other areas. Well, yeah, I mean, speak, speaking of that is one of those both future things, but also I think one of the things that people are asking, can this do more is agentic AI. And that was huge uh, throughout the last couple of days here. Was there anything in terms of the architecture, as you said, so starting from that either use case or user experience that you guys are envisioning around Agentic AI, was there anything specific you guys had to do as you pulled all of the different pieces together? Because Agentic AI pulls everything from all the sensor stuff that's coming in for context, all of the, on the software side, all of the personalized information that the person has on their phone, and then, and then the outreach to whatever other API-based apps that agent is trying to access, right? So were there any changes to either any of the XPUs, the CPU, GPU, NPU, or the memory architecture, potentially even, you know, the, the internal chip networking that you guys had to do specifically to enable Agentic AI? All of it. <laughs> it, it, it really is. Um, because, you know, the, the way I see it is when we talk about Agentic AI, especially as we're making this a more personal um, device, right, uh, system to you, um, what we have to do is we have to make sure every one of our 
custom design technologies are working well together. And I use the analogy of it's like a symphony, right? You got to make sure it's in sync and you cannot miss, miss a beat yeah. on that. So it's all of the above. And, you know, it's really exciting to see. A few years ago, we started talking about AI in general. But now we're actually talking about having a phone in your hand. That's your personal assistant that you carry around everywhere you go. So that vision taking it to today, you think about this as, hey, um, this personal assistant sees what you see. He hears what you hear. It's aware of your surrounding and actually learns about your you know, um, preferences as well and be able to take actions for you, be able to give you recommendations, all of that. So what that requires is a lot of horsepower a lot of horsepower, but you can't do it um, and just increase the horsepower. You have to think about power as well. So that's a huge part of it is how do we get this uh, capability up, um, but keep the power low with the power efficiency. So I think, you know, um, you've seen this few days of like CPU, for example, right? We have over 20% improvement in the CPU, but 35% power efficiency improvement. Wow. So those are huge. And we're doing that across every single IP that we custom design on that. And then on top of all of it, we also have the new uh, sensing hub on it. Um, the sensing hub is an ultra low power. So basically it will have the personal graph, um, you know, to collect and understand uh, your preferences and all the information about you. And it's kept here local on your device, so secure. Ultra low power, always on and secure on it. So that's how we kind of combine all of that. And then with the MPU, with the CPU, with the GPU, and also with the camera all together. It is that's very crazy. complicated. Though. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's crazy that you were able to get a bump in performance and a decrease in power because it used to be yeah. you used that budget to do one or the other. Now you're having to do both. Uh, so I'll have more questions for you on personalization, but maybe I'll pass it on to, to Dave. Well, since we're talking about silicon, and I mean, I think that's, you know, I'm a chip wonk for sure. Um, I think that's what's interesting to me is, you know, you've you've got, you know, a bunch more performance in the can for CPU, GPU as well. I think 60% performance gain, was that the number? Uh, in graphics acceleration? GPU, uh, GPU was a 20% gain in performance. Okay. Right. Yeah, so significant gains all around and, and NPU as well. Um, did you achieve that with a re-architecture? Was it process-based? Because I know this is three nanometer silicon uh, through TSMC probably at this point, but did you, did you achieve that in architecture or process, a combination of both? Um, it is a combination of both. Um, Process helps, but process uh, is part of it. Um, but this is really where the beauty of the custom design comes mm. in, is we can choose what we want to design. We yeah. don't have to take the whole stack um, of it. So that's the reason we look at the experiences um, and choose the features, the capability that we think makes sense. So it's very um, uh, together, and we do this for across every one of the IPs on that. So that's how you can get that kind of performance with such a, uh, improvements on power. Mm. And then there's there's new technology with respect to cache within the GPU slices now, right? Correct. Um, and uh, essentially a shared L3 cache that will help with performance for, for graphics and gaming and power efficiency in that regard as well. What other types of um, use cases maybe can that be helpful for? Uh, would, would it help with AI processing? Are there any other areas where I guess maybe some of your partners are thinking about utilizing that cache? Oh. And then help me with the acronym again on that. What it's a that? high power, uh, high performance. HPM, right? Yeah, yeah, high performance memory. I always want to say HPM, but that's for the data center. That's HPM, right. got it. All right. High so, performance memory, Yeah, it's, uh, it's huge. It's a 18 megabyte uh, memory that we have. Um, and where this really helps is actually gaming. Um, this is this is sitting right there next to the GPU. Um, so you're going to have an increase on bandwidth, uh, a decrease on just, you know, um, on the latency, very short latency on that. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help with the gaming to give you that flawless uh, experience on gaming with a very minimal uh, frame drop on it. Okay. So that's and then we actually partner up with a lot of the triple A mobile game. Uh, on that, there's a huge list of it that we partner up with. So that means the game developer is going to go and use this particular memory and optimize the game to fully utilize the memory. 
Very cool. Very cool. Francis, what else you got? Yeah, it still amazes me. I think somebody gave a stat on one of the one of the um, keynotes that in China, some people do like eight hours of gaming a day or something like that. That's just that's just crazy. But I guess uh, mobile gaming guess, market's pretty big. I guess so. I mean, maybe one thing that I'll I'll uh, go back to on something something that we talked about earlier was personalization. Right. So you mentioned the the personal graph and and how huge that is, especially with respect to agentic AI. Now, you know, being Qualcomm, and I know this kind of might get a little bit outside of your purview because you've got the mobile, but part of the mobile is, you know, as we go about our daily lives, maybe we're in our house, uh, we're on our tablet, and then we go on our phone to go out to the car, then the car becomes the device while we're in there driving, right? So, and, and, but even within the phone, like, you, you know, every year or two, we upgrade our phones. So during that time, uh, the device is learning about you specifically. How do you, in both of those cases, whether you're upgrading a device or you're going from device to device, which Qualcomm is in on all of those, um, how do you guys envision, uh, you know, balancing convenience with privacy in terms of finding a way to get that personal graph and the personalization of things that they've learned in one device and make sure that all the other devices have have access to that if you if they want to. Yeah, um, that is a very careful architect of um, our software stack mm -hmm. to make sure it stays secure on your own personal devices and without your permission, it doesn't go anywhere else. And this is part of the reason why we have a whole ecosystem of different type of a product, whether it's the uh, wearables, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the tablets and also the phone. Now we have full control. We understand how user use And the cars different. too. You guys the are doing a really too. good job in the cars. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so we have a really good understanding of how user use uh, different type of devices on a daily basis. We play around with it ourselves. We're designing to it. So we can build a whole entire software around that to make sure what needs to stay secure, stay secure. Without your permission, it doesn't go out. So are there are there maybe added benefits if somebody were fully bought into the Snapdragon e ecosystem and go, you know what, I'm only going to buy a phone, a tablet, a PC, and a car that has Snapdragon in it. And if I have that, I'm going to get a little bit extra capability, especially around personalization, than if it was from, you know, maybe other suppliers. I think right now, definitely, you know, our goal is to make sure that transitions as you're moving from device to device is smooth and seamless, right? This is the technology is in the background. So you actually shouldn't see the technology. You shouldn't feel it. Everything should just, the experience should be just very intuitive. And that's where you're going to get across the Snapdragon devices. Oh. Cool. And let's talk about something that's core to Qualcomm has been from the beginning, connectivity. Um, we heard uh, Cristiano, your CEO, speak of the agentic modem, um, and that was everybody's sort of radar peaked up on that. What sort of things uh, have been architected with respect to this new uh, Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 with, with respect to connectivity? So you hear about that, and we added, for example, the CPU, we added a metric uh, accelerator in the CPU. Uh, in a modem, very similar. So that's the reason there's a there's a MPU, a small one, that's also in the modem. So that it has awareness, it understands your history, it understands your location. So for example, if you're in the subway and you're a teenager doing those crazy gaming on that, it understands and knows the traffic flow that's happening. And okay. it knows how to optimize for that. So when we talk about agentic AI, that's just one uh, example of some of the AI features we're bringing to modem. So there's a lot more coming as well. But def definitely the modem also have awareness of where you are at and what that traffic flow is and it optimized on the fly for you. And maybe the handoff between cellular and Wi-Fi and all that good stuff. Exactly. So a little agent inside the modem to, yeah. to manage the manage the connectivity. That's, that's cool stuff. That's really cool stuff. Um, you know, we should probably wrap, but uh, Cindy, I guess, what perhaps should be the key to take away for folks here with respect to Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5? What's maybe, I know you have, you love all your children equally <laughs> on the chipset, right? But what's, what's, what's the key takeaway? What's your, what's your favorite part of the chip or the, the new platform or 
or whatever you would like to run with there? Uh, I think that um, my couple favorite parts is going to be one is going to be now AI is going to be on your device with Snapdragon 8 Lead Gen 5. Uh, the capability is huge, incredible. So you're going to, it's going to unlock so many more experiences uh, on your device and also photography. Professional grade photography and video is also part of this product. So hope you look forward to it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cindy. Appreciate your time. And that about wraps for the tech stack, folks. Make sure you subscribe and like this video if you would. And uh, you'll catch us next time on the tech stack.